Propaganda. It is something that we are subjected to on a daily basis. It does not matter what political or philosophical background you are in, we all consume propaganda. From political commentary to the movies we watch to the books we read, propaganda is everywhere. And it is no surprise that governments and politicians deploy propaganda to convince people to think a certain way. And one of the supreme propagandists in this regard is none other than China. China, specifically the CCP, have been going through a new phase of propaganda to promote Chinese nationalism and love of their country. One of the ways they have done this is by employing influencers, and in today's video we will be taking a look at one of the propagandists who has one of the strangest and wildest backstories I have seen. And this individual is Nathan Rich. To begin talking about Nathan Rich, and what makes him so odd in a way, we need to talk about his beginnings. Now, in this video, everything that will be used is public information, most of which Nathan Rich himself admitted to. Now, with that being said, who is Nathan Rich? Nathan Rich was born into a family of Scientologists. His experiences being in the cult are unfavorable, to say the least. He explains that some of his first memories are when he was eight years old and in session, as they call it. So, the first thing that I remember is actually relevant as well, um, it, which is actually being in session. I, was, I, re, I recall being in session um, in, in Hollywood. And uh, at the time, my mother uh, was, you know, I, I would go into session with these sort of field auditors. And uh, I was, my, my memory was being on the ground in the auditing room on, on some carpet. And I was, uh, crying and I, I didn't want to be there and I, I just remember like wanting to be outside and play and not wanting to be in that room um, so kind of as as sort of stereotypical as it sounds I mean that's that's what I remember as you heard in the clip, Nathan was definitely in an abusive situation, it seems. He said he was going through something known as a session or auditing in the cult. Session and auditing can be seen as a therapy, technically speaking. However, it is known to be very abusive and cruel from what Scientologists have explained. The method basically boils down to asking them questions. These questions are supposed to shed light on your past experiences and help you to move on from past trauma and mistakes that you may have suppressed. They would then start the process over and over again to get the truth out of you and stop lying to yourself. There is more to the method and if interested I'll link a video from the movie known as The Master that supposedly uses the same method in the scene. This practice however has been debunked and largely panned by the scientific community at large. Things however would only get worse for Nathan in the cult as time goes on. Nathan has always had an issue with his religion in a way. He didn't fit in well with the church he felt that he was just practicing the religion for his mother's sake. My mother was very much into having me do Scientology courses and training, auditing from literally as early as I can remember. I just wasn't really taking to it and felt like I'm doing this for my mother. And not fitting in, he started to act out in negative ways, doing criminal activities and acting out against his parents, such as stealing baseball cards and the like. Now, at least in my experience, other religions would guide them back through advice and counseling, but Nathan did not receive such comfort and support. Keep in mind, Nathan was really young at this point, like eight or nine when some of these things happened to him. Nathan was then coerced into going into the Nate Kinsley Ranch, a ranch used by Scientology to get people on the right track, they say. But in reality, it is much darker than that. The camp was physically taxing and like a workout camp. You, you wake up, you gotta clean your room immediately. And then you go and you have breakfast, and then you have a lot of what they call mest work, which is essentially physical labor. And then you have to clean up everything after that, the whole, all the grounds, everything. You would do some type of schooling, things that you need to, to study for Scientology. Hearing this, it doesn't sound so bad. There are plenty of camps like this that push you to the limit and push people to the limit that aren't a problem. However, this is not the full story. In the camp, if someone were to make a mistake in Anyway, as Nathan Rich says, you would be punished. One of the ways you would be punished is by being bathed with a metal fence brush and worse, being watched by everyone. I was generally dirty. I was a scrappy kid running around, you know, in, in the dirt. And um, that wasn't acceptable. 
one of the security guards was told that he needed to give me what, what they call the GI shower. And essentially what he did is he took me out from muster to that communal shower stall and had all of the students and staff, including the girls, surround the fence and look in while he scrubbed me with a metal fence brush. He was very careful not to give me anything more than some scratches. Yeah, this just seemed to make Nathan even worse, causing him to smoke his first cigarette at the ranch. So the first time that I, I smoked a cigarette was also at the ranch. Another kid and I found it under a table, and so we smoked part of it. We thought we got away with it. The next day, there was a KR on us, and Wally Hanks read the KR, and he said, okay, well, playing with fire, three paddles each. And so the paddle was a big wooden paddle with holes drilled through it and notches on it from all the kids who had been hit by it. And Wally would reach up, get it down from the wall, and he would bend you over a couch in front of all the kids and staff, and then he would hit you with it. People would kind of put tissues in their in their underpants, and so sometimes you would have to take your pants down or even take your, your underwear down to get paddled. When he was caught, he was given three paddles with a wooden paddle that looks similar to this. Wally Hanks was supposedly the person who did it, and while this is not Nathan Rich being paddled in the audio, it is an alleged recording of this individual dishing out corporal punishment. And whatever your opinions are of paddling or punishment of this kind, when listening to the audio, you can understand this is no paddling. I must warn you, this may be disturbing to some viewers, so viewer discretion is advised. Well, he's going to stay in here all night. He'll stay there last night. I'll bring him like a man. Over this way. Oh, I'm so glad you're going to hurt. That's the purpose of it. Ready? 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 Marco, I've had this myself. Marco, it doesn't give me pleasure to do this. Look at the picture of LRH right there. Marco, Marco, look at that picture of LRH. Marco, Marco, look at that picture of LRH. This is his policy. Look at the picture of LRH. That's it. Uh, uh, okay. uh, All right. Nathan also said there was a lot of mental and verbal abuse from the counselors. These things done to him really affected him negatively as time went on. Nathan claims that the events that occurred during the camp negatively affected him. His relationship with his mother that he said was good and very healthy relationship was going downhill. He had a bitter animosity towards her for sending him to the camp. Started going back to Scientology schools and I had some resentment about my childhood with the ranch. It's me not getting along with my mother. It was a very large relationship in my life. It was the only one that mattered, and it was falling apart. He started sneaking out of the house and doing illicit activities even more. There was a lot of pressure from my mother about Scientology, pressure in school for Scientology. So I started acting out. I started, you know, sneaking out at night. I 
was pretty miserable and pretty unhappy. He still didn't feel like he fit into the cult his mother forced him into. He was then forced to go to Scientology schools and there he found a friend that he was able to relate to and that he actually liked. She told him that the friend would be going to a Scientology school and that he would be going with him. Nathan was excited for that, but the harsh truth came. And then Wednesday rolls around. I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning. The security guard from the first ranch, the guy who scrubbed me with a metal fence brush, was on my bed. He told me that he's there to take me back to the ranch. Better now. We don't. There's none of the abuses that were at the first ranch. While he's not there, kind of snapping into reality and realizing what's happening. And then I start to say, like, no, I'm not. I'm not going. And so he grabbed my arm, twisted around my back, and quite literally dragged me from my home, kicking and screaming. My mother was actually smiling when they were dragging me out. That's right, Nathan was forced to go back to the camp, and as he was going back, he was kicking and screaming, wishing not to go back. His mother, however, watched him be taken away and smiled as it happened. His mother even signed over power of attorney to the Mays Kinsley Ranch. There are more details about what happened at the camps. Apparently, he spent four years at those camps, and they really did traumatize him in a way. Nathan graduated the camp at 17. Yes, that's right, 17 years old. He was not able to contact his mother or family or anyone outside of the camp due to his mother's orders. At this point, he is home and is no longer at the camp and yet again felt pressure from his peers and family to live up to their standards of Scientology. He was alone, homeless, and started doing many criminal activities as stated before. You can find many of these statements all over the internet, even on YouTube. Nathan Rich then decided to pick himself up from the ground and start anew. There's more to his life at this stage, but I think this helps lay the foundation. This helps lay the foundation of the next era of his life. Nathan Rich's career is fascinating to say the least. He said that he wanted to pursue computers as a career, so he studied night and day and claimed to get good at computers. So what did Nathan Rich do? He was a network administrator for multiple companies, some big names like Gatorade. Yeah, that's right, Gatorade. Then there is his internet career, which is an interesting venture to say the least. He originally started his YouTube channel posting things like TikToks and the like, and slowly transitioned to propaganda, which we'll get into later. His channel was called Wealth of Taiwan, meaning Hot Pot King. In fact, he still calls himself this to this day in the intros of his videos. The reason he calls himself that is due to his love of Chinese food and culture of the country. All of his videos are either about him or about Chinese propaganda. So that's his content, but let's talk about his TikToks a little more. Yes, he has a TikTok that I can't find now, but we got some bangers like this. Google. Google. Yeah. Lil Dump Remix. You butterfly dork. Oh. Wanna, wanna be gangster trying to be ghetto. Whoa. You smoke too much dope. Gazi Garcia's a little slow. You're funny though. Making real bread, but you still be a hoe. Huh? Front the show. Real, real OGs know you hard as a rose. Yeah. You're ignorant, bro. bro. Your hair looks like a UFO. Whoa. You smoke too much dope. Yeah. Call, call you little dump because your IQ's low. Yeah, Always the butt of the joke. Can his brain handle this tote? Yeah, pretty cringe. In fact, one of his videos got like 47 million views from what I found. I don't know if this is the video, but here it is. Chinese Bowser. Welcome to the Dolce & Gabbana Inspired Show. Eat with Fork & Knife, Episode 1. Today we are going to show you how to use these weird shaped metal things to eat our magnificent Chinese Bowser. Should you grab both of them with one hand, and use them like chopsticks to pick up the bowls? No, 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 not like that. Mmm, yeah, that's right. Gently thrust the knife deep into the bowls and bring it up to your lips. Oh, don't let the juices spill out. These are the only parodies I found. There are probably more, but if there is anything for me to say about his parodies and comedy, is that they are cringe. But anyway, that is the content that he put out before his dive into the content which he makes now, which what has been said a million times over is propaganda. Now, there are many videos he has made, but I think it's important to go after the main claims that he has been spewing. He, in pretty much all, if not most of his videos, talk about how great China is or how foreign lie about China. He even went to a Huawei conference in China and is followed by Chinese officials. You can fact check me on this, but 
but it's true. The main thing he is known for is going against the Hong Kong protests. If you don't know, there were protests in Hong Kong against laws encroaching on their rights as citizens. However, the worst thing he has tried to cover up in the topic that will be covered in this video is the genocide of the Uyghurs in China. If you don't know, there is a mass genocide of people in China. These people are the Muslim Uyghurs who are being targeted by the Chinese government because they do not follow the same beliefs as them and they are seen as defectors and not truly Chinese. Part of the reason they are not seen as Chinese is because of their religion, but also they are not Wan Chinese, the main ethnic race of mainland China. China has been trying extremely hard to cover up and suppress the truth about what they are doing. In fact, when some politicians and senators come out against China, they make propaganda videos directed towards them. And this is where we get into Nathan Rich. You see, Nathan Rich has pretty much completely denied the severity of the situation. How he does this is by saying that the U.S. government has murdered thousands of Muslim civilians in the war on terror. So Brown University says over 800,000 people have died due to direct war violence and several times as many indirectly. Now, what are they talking about? They're talking about the U.S. led war on terror. Now, of those 100, uh, sorry, 801,000, 335,000 of them were civilians. Which is true, and there is no denying that, and I think we can all agree that's awful. However, saying that just because one country does something wrong does not make another immune to criticism. Later on in the video, he claims that the Uyghurs were being put in schools to be re-educated from being radical Muslims. It's obviously false when you look into why they put them into camps. And in fact, some sources say that the reason people became so radical there was because of China's encroachment onto their rights as citizens. They put them into the camps to indoctrinate them into worshiping the state. They literally sell the people like clowns to give entertainment, forcibly pick cotton, and do whatever forced labor the Chinese government wants them to do. And they hate the fact that they have more children that the population policies allow them. Plus, the fact that they try to immigrate to another country so that they can live in peace. The CCP also punishes anyone from Xinjiang speaking out against these practices and considers it terrorism. To make matters worse, Foreign countries actually forcibly send them back to China. Families have been ripped apart and some of the worst conditions are met for these people. Keep in mind, Nathan Rich himself was forced into going to an abusive ranch for children and here he is justifying an even worse experience that these people are having to go through. Keep in mind that there are children in these camps being put through this as well. Some of these kids have even died. I respect Nathan for doing so much to improve his life and leave an abusive, toxic environment to accomplish his dreams. But Nathan Rich, whether he wants to admit it or not, has blood on his hands for defending such atrocities. The one thing that has been in the back of my mind since I heard of Nathan Rich is why? Why would a man who has gone on to multiple YouTube channels, did multiple interviews, even went on national television to talk about the abuse he went through in Scientology, turn around and spread lies and propaganda for the CCP? Seems a bit hypocritical, doesn't it? I have some theories, however. First of them being him actually supporting the CCP. Now, you might wonder how anyone, especially foreigners, support the CCP. Well, I think there are multiple reasons for why this may be. He could have been duped by the propaganda himself and only seeing what China is putting out and was convinced by it. The truth is, the longer you stay in a country or a town or a state, you are going to assimilate and take on characteristics of that culture and so on. So it makes sense that maybe that's what happened. On the other hand, he does have internet access with the use of a VPN, which is illegal in China, by the way. I cannot say for certain if any of this is true, but I think it is indeed a possibility. The second theory is he is doing this for money, cloud, and benefits from China. This is probably the most realistic reason for why he is doing this. You see, if you're an influencer or blogger in China, you can get free trips and basically free vacations. Many of these propagandists do this, and it's obviously a fake environment with Western music playing and people just having the time of their lives with but it convinces foreigners and native citizens of China that all is fine and okay. Nathan could be experiencing these benefits even though he is not a travel vlogger, but we just don't know. It is certain, like I said before, that he is being supported by government officials in China that follow him on Twitter and is also supported by pro-CCP influ influencers. So he is getting benefits one way, but 
is he getting paid for such activity? Well, yes, I think so. However, some like Serpent ZA and talking about China vloggers is that they get compensated with free trips and the fact that their YouTube channels explode with growth. And I also think he doesn't mention this enough, but pro CCP outlets and propagandists pretty much shout them out by putting their videos on their website. Others like Blau86 says that the foreign shill, as he calls them, make 100 to a whopping 200K per video. Now the second tier, the middle tier, is the foreign shill. The pay is around $100 to, up to upwards of $20,000 per post. That's an estimate. This involves reading scripts about topics that you don't understand or making a video about something that you don't understand that benefits the Chinese Communist Party or the CCP. So there is an economic incentive according to some people. The next reason is clout. I already talked about this some, but there is more to it. You see, when these propagandists make videos, their propaganda gets more views than their other videos and their channels just explode in popularity. So what are my final thoughts on Nathan Rich? I think he is a terrible person. I'm not gonna be apologetic when saying that. He, like I said before, spent many years, time, and effort in exposing Scientology, yet he himself defends the country for doing the exact same thing, but worse. Even willing to talk about his own homeland that appalls in such horror, even willing to talk down about his homeland that appalls such horror, but props up a country that practice it. It is a terrible thing, really, to see someone think and believe in something so awful, but it doesn't seem like Nathan Rich has any plans of slowing down. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this because there's more coming in the way. I have a video in the works that should be pretty interesting. Um, hopefully I can get to work on it soon after this one. Again, like I said, please be sure to like and subscribe and catch you in the next video.